welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here I'm Megan so those of you who are regulars here will know I love finding new ways to find what books to read <laughs> the obsession that I got with it was was borderline unhealthy I'm always experimenting with new ways to discover new books and find new ways to decide what I'm reading. And I discovered this app called Novelic, which basically is like this book recommendation app. It looks really, really cool. They also have a book club section on there. They have loads of different ways to recommend you books. It looks so interesting. So I decided I'm gonna let it pick what I read. <laughs> This video is being sponsored by Novelic, which is so kind of them. But obviously all of my opinions are my own. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, but I'm honestly just really excited to explore this app with you. We've done stuff like this before and I'm super excited for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let Novelic choose two different books that I read, three different functions are on the app, which I'm, I honestly can't wait to see what it ends up picking. I have no idea yet what I'm gonna be reading. And then I'm also gonna be running a book club for the guest list over on Novelic, which is one of my favorite books. You guys voted for which of my favorite books it should be. And so we're gonna be reading this and kind of testing out the book club feature as well at the end because anyone can make a book club but we'll do that at the end the first two books in this video are going to be novel like picking what I read here's the thing I get terrified like handing over control but also I do it every week so like <laughs> I'm just really excited to explore the app and see all the different features with you guys so Let's get straight into it. Okay, so it is time for Novelic to pick the first book that I'm going to be reading. I'm really excited. I'm really nervous, but I'm really excited. Okay, so I'm gonna start recording my screen. So you have this obviously homepage. We're gonna come back to this in a bit, but I'm gonna go to the books page, which is your own personal bookstore. Ooh. I think I'm just special. So basically the idea behind this is that it's a different for everyone. It's kind of based on what you like, what you've been looking at, and we have all these different genres. We have like literally every genre under the sun. Even down here there's like steampunk, time travel, whatever. And when you click on these, you get 12 recommendations. This is graphic novels. This is when this isn't picking what I'm reading, by the way. <laughs> you get 12 recommendations. And this is different every time, it's different for everyone, and it's just kind of recommending based on what you like and something I think is really cool about this and that's why and why I'm excited to see what ends up coming up when I pick mine is that whether a book has like 10,000 people recommending it or one person recommending it they e have an equal chance of appearing in this section so that's what I think is really cool I think it's really fun to like read from lesser known authors and lesser known books and I really like that this app is kind of up uplifting that because I think other book apps and book recommendation services sometimes just you know uplift and regurgitate the same popular book so I think that's really fun so as many of you know I've been in, I've been in a slump guys I've been in like the slump from hell <laughs> it's actually not funny it's it's, it's not, not funny, funny. it's serious <laughs> <laughs> no no but it's not funny <laughs> at the end of the day is it it's serious it's been bad it's been really bad I've been in an awful slump and so I really want to get out of it and so I feel like the best thing to get me out of this will be a mystery book mysteries always get me reading always get me excited so I think I'm gonna go on the mystery tab oh my god I think I'm gonna go on the mystery tab and we'll read a mystery and we'll see what it recommends okay let's see let's see Whew, I feel so nervous <gasps> okay oh okay uh, 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 uh. oh Okay, we have a lot of options here. Oh my god. Okay, what do we want to read? So, I own ABC Murders. It's literally right here. Hello, with this gorgeous edition. But this is obviously a Poirot novel, and I'm reading them in order. And this is quite... I've got quite a few to go. I'll probably be reading this next year by my usual trajectory. I own two other ones on here. Um, and I would like to read something I own because, you know, <laughs> I've got to get through my TBR. And that's Shiver and Apples Never Fall. And I... Why do I want to read more? See, it is like summary, so is Shiver the best thing right to read right now? Do you know what? No, I, I, I'm more anticipating Shiver. So we're gonna read Shiver by Ali Reynolds. Oh! I've been wanting to read that book so bad! I'm so excited! Okay, I think that's the right decision. We'll read Shiver. <gasps> I feel so lucky. This is so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna go unwrap that because it's one of the books that's wrapped up. And I'll see you in a bit once I read a bit.
So I am 100 pages into Shiver and I just want to check in with like my initial thoughts. They are, I don't know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so random. I can't believe I just did that. So basically, we're following these five individuals who, very early on, we figure out they have been invited back to this ski resort where they used to ski together and like take part in competitions when they were younger, under the pretense that each other have invited them, but each of them are like, uh, that's awkward because I didn't invite. I didn't invite anyone. <laughs> so there's someone else, or it's one of them, and they're lying inviting them all to this place. And they get there and there's weird shit happening, things are going missing and we can't tell if it's one of them that we can't trust or if it's someone else. And it seems like they all kind of have their dark past, you know, they were all sleeping with one another back in the day, like there's shit going down. And one of the guys, his sister went missing seemingly like all those 10 years ago. And she was particularly kind of the rival of our main protagonist. I don't know how I feel about it. Here's the thing. It gets straight into it. Like, it fucking... It gets straight into it. There's no, like, preamble. There's no real, like, setting it up. We literally dive into them being like, there's some shady shit going on. Which I like, you know, you gotta, like, tease me a little bit. Like, you gotta get me warmed up. It was just a bit abrupt for me at the start. And I don't know how much I love the way it's written. I don't know if it's, like, a bit, like, I don't know. When I say simple, I do like simple. But I'm just not sure if I'm loving the actual writing itself. Uh, also, I'm listening to the audiobook to, like, make me read. Um, not that I don't want to read, but like, you know, it helps me read quicker having the audiobook. This isn't Shade, but the audiobook narrator, like, she sounds like she has a lot of saliva in her mouth. <laughs> like, the T's and the K's, they just make me feel uncomfortable. Like, I'm like, oh, like... <laughs> I am really uncomfortable right now and I'm feeling like I want to get up and leave. When she pronounces them, especially when it's sped up. When I'm listening to it just while I'm doing things, I listen to it at a slower speed. It's it's okay at that speed, but when I'm re trying to read along, it's not quite working for me. I'm a little bit like, eee, uh, stop speaking. So yeah, I don't know. I like the you know claustrophobic, they're trapped there. We don't know who we can trust. We don't know what's going on. Isolated, closed circle mystery, my jam. But um uh, i don't know about i don't know i don't know about the book itself i don't know how i feel about it yet because this is like my favorite trope right it's a group of characters with lies with secrets to uncover trapped in this one place together but i'm not 100 percent sold yet so i'm gonna go have a bath <laughs> <laughs> so you know and i've got reading sprints tonight with my patrons so hopefully i'll get another good chunk of this read during that We have some cats. <laughs> okay, so I need to get ready for the day, but I want to listen to the audiobook whilst I do so. So I thought I'd check in with you. I'm on page like 260-ish. So I've got about like 160-ish pages left to go. Um, I'm still not loving it. <laughs> I think I said skiing before, it's snowboarding, apologies. And yeah, we got to get the right terminology because there's a lot of jargon and snowboarding speak in this and I hate it. <laughs> I need a drink. It reminds me of when I read Midnight in Everwood where that was ballet, right? You're reading someone who obviously really knows what they're talking about, but they don't make it digestible for you. They just like say all the fucking words and you're supposed to know them. I don't know what the, you know, half spin, 720, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. I don't know what any of these words mean. They're talking about all this stuff and I generally don't understand in the slightest i don't understand in the slightest so that is it's really annoying to me i feel like you know you think of for example completely different but andy weir right when he writes sci-fi he's talking about stuff that i don't have a clue about generally don't have a clue about but he talks about it in a way that's so easily digestible and so easily understandable you can make snowboarding easy for me to understand like come on so when i i was thinking to myself this is someone who wanted to write a book about snowboarding than wanted to write a book. Do you know what I mean? And I looked it up and on the back, Miss Ali Reynolds is an ex-snowboarder. It was her life, competing in the British Championships and was once in the UK top 10. So there we go. So 
I decided to go and investigate it. It feels like a mystery vessel to <laughs> write about snowboarding. Uh, I don't know. I'm just not really enjoying it. I don't know if I like the writing. The writing and the characters, I just don't know if I believe them. I'm finding like the narrative voice a bit annoying. But I love the tropes behind it. You know, I love this group of characters stuck in this place together. They all can't trust each other. You know, you're all suspecting one another. There's secrets being revealed. Like I love the idea of it, but I don't think I'm loving the execution. I don't know. I'm not vibing, but let's go ahead and finish it. Take a train ride just to see you. Ride for hours just to please you. Okay, I finished it. <laughs> and I'm giving it two and a half stars. I rounded it down on Goodreads to two. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I'm glad I finally read it. We have a big problem with dual timelines. If you've been here a long time, you'll know. Dual timelines irritate me. This book would have been so much better with just the present day timeline with the past incorporated through, you know, maybe some minor flashbacks some net sometimes, or like more imaginative ways of incorporating that information other than it just being a dual timeline. Because dual timelines is boring. boring. Because you're always so much more interested in one time than the other. It's usually the present day one where the actual exciting stuff is happening. Because the past stuff, you know, the consequences of the past stuff is always hinted at. You know, like nothing that exciting is gonna happen in the past because you know, it's not like someone in the past can die and then be there in the present. Like, you kind of know what's happening. I just find it's, it's so annoying. <laughs> I feel like we've actually done quite well this year. If we haven't done much well with reading this year, but one thing we have done well is I haven't read a lot of dual timelines. I feel like towards the end of, um, last year, I was just moaning to you about them like every other day. Like, I don't like them and I've done a good job of avoiding them. But yeah, this has a dual timeline where we're, we, yeah, we're skipping back and forth. One thing I will say, I did not like, I gave this two stars, so I liked it even less, but I did not like rock, paper, scissors. But in this, there's occasional past letters that show things that happened in the past, but they're not like overdone. That is a better way of showing things happening in the past than just every other chapter being a past flashback. I'm sorry. It's the truth. I also just felt like I never rooted for any of the characters, which when you're like, when they're like fighting for their lives, they're out here fighting in the trenches. Like you need to at least root for them. Like Lucy Foley, for example, you'll all talk to me about that, right? Obviously writes often dislikable characters, right? They're not very nice people, but I always find I'm rooting for someone. Whether I like them or not, I feel like I'm rooting for them in some way, shape or form. I did not care about anyone in this book. I could care less. Like, I generally did not root for any of them. <laughs> I couldn't care. Like, the protagonist, I didn't care up until I didn't care. So that's like, why am I reading it? I just found it boring. It felt like someone who wanted to tell me how great snowboarding is and actually wanted to write like a good mystery thriller. So 2.5 stars. But I will say this section of the app, I do love. I feel like if you're in a bit of a rut with your reading and you know maybe what genre you fancy, go on there. Either pick like a random book off there that it gives you if you don't own it or like keep, because you only get 12 at a time, keep refreshing the tabs, go between the genres until you see a book that you own and then read that. I feel like it is a really fun way of like 
choosing what you read. Obviously, I always like <laughs> find fun ways to choose what I read for videos, but I feel like for you guys watching, it could be like a really fun way to spice up and add a bit of a twist to what you're reading. Now we need to pick the next book we're going to be reading before we do the book club for the guest list. I am so excited for this. <laughs> I actually cannot wait to look at it. So on the app, there is a section called Ask the Community, which when you go on it, it's you can request a book. You can say, I'm looking for a book like this, which obviously this is useful for when you're not looking for a particular genre. You're maybe looking for tropes or a style of book. And it's not something you can like Google. You need people to tell you. You don't understand how excited this gets me. Like, <laughs> it's been so excited. People have asked for different, you know, recommendations. They're looking for different things. And you can like, you know, respond. And I think it's so much fun. And the more people that do this, the more people that respond to each other, it's such a fun idea and a fun way of sharing books. So I put in a request, okay? Oh my God, I've had 10 responses. Okay. So I said, I love books that are a mix between mystery, fantasy, and historical in terms of genre. The book's primary genre can be any of those three as long as it has elements of each. I also love books that have a strong female relationships, be it sisters or a friendship group, so it'd be a plus if it has that. But it's not, you know, it's not necessary. I'm more looking for something that's a mix of mystery, fantasy, and historical. That is my favourite element. So let's go on it. Okay, Poppy hasn't read this. I'm gonna say I need a book that someone's read. Okay, I need a book that someone's. I'm not. I'm not taking a book that like someone in this has heard of. Shauna Maguire. I know that's a pretty big series. Brianna, you're trying to. You're trying to make me fail. I'm not reading a series. I'm not reading a series. Um, not reading Noma Novik. <laughs> I've just never really been interested in that series. I know it's like dragons. Dragons. I don't think they're my thing. I don't think they're my thing. Not interested in Terry Pratchett. Ooh, this one looks interesting. That's a possibility. Okay. Ooh, A Skin Full of Shadows. Then Gian hasn't read either of these either. If Gian had read this, I think I'd probably pick Pandora. This one looks really interesting. George in London. Draw I think I'd probably pick that. I want to find out what A Skin Full of Shadows is about. Let's look that up. Shortlisted for Waterstones Book of the Year 2017. Story of a bare hearted girl. Okay, hold up. Pretty legendary if you ask me. I love it. This sounds like a fairy tale. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. I need to read this one. <gasps> oh my God, spirit, civil, war. what? This looks so interesting. <gasps> okay, we're reading A Skin Full of Shadows. We're gonna read that. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh, historical fantasy, eerie, oh my God. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay, I am going to order this from somewhere. I'm gonna find it. Oh my god, look at this. I'm gonna find it somewhere. I'm gonna order this and we're gonna read. I've never even heard of this book. A Skin Full of Shadows. We're gonna read that next in the vlog. Oh my god. <laughs> Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> Listen, when it arrived, a little tear at the top, which, you know, come on, guys. But anyway, when it arrived, I looked at the cover and I thought, oh, oh, we've hit it. We've hit the jackpot. And I was right. <laughs> I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with this book. I am loving it. I can't even describe you. Like it feels like a new favorite of all time. And I'm only hundred pages in like, <gasps> oh, anyway. So I would immediately say like this cover, it gives like very Bear in the Nightingale vibes. If you like that, I mean, it has a bear very prominent in it. That's my, oh, it's just, it's just, so basically, <laughs> we're following Make Peace, who um, when growing up, her mother's been trying to like train her to not allow spirits in. Spirits kind of want to enter make peace. She lives in like this, uh, with Puritans in this like town. Back in the time this is set, they used to like give their kids like ward off sin, like as a name and stuff. <laughs> One thing leads to another and a bear's spirit enters her. And there's a bear's, yeah, there's a bear's spirit in her and she is sent off to live with her father's kind of family. I mean, part one is called Licking the Cub. I mean, this tells you, it's getting weird. This just reads like a fairy tale. It is one of the most magical, 
like childlike but mature but mad oh it's just wonderful it is literally like a fairy tale the writing of this book is absolutely incredible i love make pieces a character she's only about 12 i think when we have been reading her but i've just got to part two and i think she's going to be about 14 15 now and i'm really loving the setting of where she's living now with her father's kind of ancestors and just the writing you guys the writing is absolutely incredible it's like everything i ever wanted why have none of you ever mentioned this book to me before why have you guys not been like forcing it down my throat oh my i feel like i've some more across gold and that's why i do videos like this like what the i literally never heard of this book never heard of this author it is perfectly historical fantastical with a little bit of mystery a little bit of mystery thrown in i love the relationship that her and the spirit of the bear are already having i won't talk any more about the plot going forward that's kind of early like you know 60 pages in i feel like we can discuss that that plot i'm obsessed like I genuinely i genuinely i can't believe it i can't believe how amazing it is we've got a lot of interesting characters we've got this mystery running through it of the family and like the secrets in the family and it feels like this kind of book that like nothing is safe because like it could go anywhere like i feel like in terms of how much time we're going to cover in the book in terms of all the stuff that's going to happen we could on one hand like stay in this family house forever or it could be a blip in the story do you know what i mean like do you guys know how in the poppy war like Rin's only at the school for like the first 100 pages or like Assassin's Apprentice, like so many different things happen that could have been the whole book, right? The Poppy War, if that was like a lesser author, the school setting part would be a whole book, but it's not. This feels very similar where like the bit I'm in now could easily be the whole book or it could be a tiny fragment of it. And I'm just, I'm absolutely obsessed. It's creepy, it's eerie. It's like a dark fairy tale. I'm gonna cry. It's incredible. It's incredible. It is brilliant American literature. And I don't care what anybody, it is. It's lit, it should be taught in schools. So I'm gonna go read, hopefully tonight to at least page 250 and I'll speak to you again, like late this evening. I'll probably be a bit delirious. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and get through a good chunk of it now. I'm obsessed with it, you guys. I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> Listen, it's late at night. I should not even be here talking to you about this, but like, I just need to tell you, chef's kiss. Like, it's immaculate. It's amazing. <laughs> how, how have I never heard, how have I never heard of this book before? Have I never heard of this author before? What is actually happening? Is this one of the best books I've ever read? Huh. Huh. <laughs> this is a place for legends, okay? I'm literally just obsessed with it i just can't i can't stop reading it i'm on page 250 i've literally just sat and read like 150 pages like it was like you know easy it was easy i'm loving the writing i'm loving the unique i don't i can't really tell you yeah i can't tell you what the like unique fantastical magical element of this is but i think it's amazing and very very unique we've just had a new character added to the foray and just the dynamic that that brings to the book and like all the different things we're finding out i'm just obsessed with it i'm li I, <laughs> I can't stop reading it i think it's gonna be one of my favorite books of the year so far like i <laughs> i don't know how this is happening when i've literally never heard but it's like uh, it's like the perfect like fairy tale of a book this is why i think this section of the app is so cool because I've literally never heard of this book before. And like, how cool would it be if we were all on there like saying, I want, I want this book, this is the book I want. And then things that you can't Google, things that you can't look up, like things you can't, like not just a genre, but like things in books you want. 
and we could all recommend each other books that we've read that have it. I just love it. I think if you've read The Bear and the Nightingale, you'd love this. I think also if you read and loved Assassin's Apprentice, you would really enjoy this. It kind of has elements of both. I feel like it's just plotted so well. I'm really, like I said, I feel like it's very unpredictable. Like literally anything could happen. Sometimes you read fantasy. I think this is a problem I've had with fantasy a lot in the past maybe year or so. It's kind of predictable. Like there's certain beats that the plot is going to hit and you know it's going to hit them and it's very predictable to see how that's going to happen with this like no one is safe anything can happen and just the twists and the way I've become really attached to some of the characters in such a short space of time I'm just uh, genuinely obsessed like <laughs> I was not expecting this whenever I have to read a book for a video that I didn't own wasn't like one of the 220 books we already have sitting here I'm always like Really? Like, come on. <laughs> do we need to do that? But I don't know who I would be without reading this book. Who was I before this? I'm going to go finish it and I'll see you at some point tomorrow. Oh, I don't even know what to expect. I'm giving it five stars. You guys, I loved it. Cannot tell you how amazing this book is. Firstly, if you're looking for a fantasy standalone, read this. If you like fairy tales, particularly this is very rooted in like old British witchy kind of myths, read it. We need this, this is essential, this is a crisis. It's set during the Civil War when um, King Charles I and Parliament were like, the girlies were fighting, the girlies were fighting. I really love reading fantastical books set at a real point in history. I really love it. I feel like the the idea of this undercurrent of magic happening behind behind the scenes at this time that like these things happen in history. Oh, I just I just really love it. And I just miss Miss Frances, excuse me. The writing in this, I, I can't I generally I have found a favourite of all time. I need to read more from this author. Like I generally I can't I just finished it actually. I just finished the book and I've like got a headache. I feel like my pulse is racing. Like I I feel like I'm not very good at talking to you because you guys it was so good the relationships in this oh my god so so good the way that the story progressed and went through all these different elements was just amazing talented brilliant incredible amazing show-stopping spectacular the way also that this book looks at your sense of, of self and what a self is i won't get even more into it but like the way it does that was just it was so interesting i love make pieces of character she's very like headstrong but kind of like realizing her own strength uh throughout the book and yeah it's just written like a fairy tale <laughs> okay. i don't think you guys understand i feel incapable of talking about it i feel incapable of talking about it because i loved it so much and here's the thing when i saw this part of the app i was like fingers crossed that we were gonna have a success with it because it was like one of the parts of the app that made me most excited and like by oh, golly. golly. <laughs> Did we have a weird ladies and gentlemen? This is gonna be up there as one of my favorite books of this year. Like, I d <laughs> it's gonna be up there. It's like, it's everything I want. It definitely had that mix of genres, which is so difficult to find, but it really did have that. It just, oh, it was so good. This whole video, I'm like testing out Novelic, but I would really love loads of us to download the app, make sure you use my link though in the description. <laughs> and just to do this with each other and, and help each other find the books that we want. I think it would be so much fun. And I cannot tell you how thankful I am that I found this book. I never would have read it otherwise if it wasn't for this video. I'd never heard of it, never heard of the author. And it was just amazing. It was just everything I've ever wanted. And um, I definitely need to read more from this author. I think uh, The Lie Tree is a, is a quite famous one, but th this author has loads of books. So yeah, but I'm kind of sad, like as much as it's fun to find a fantastical standalone, I'm sad that this is it now with these characters. Like I really, I really love these characters and I think it would have been fun, but it was amazing. <laughs> I'm so happy. I am so, so happy. It was like hypnotic, it's beautiful. The magic in it, like you feel like you're being consumed by magic when reading it. I absolutely loved it. If you have never heard of this book, I would 100% recommend you pick it up. Anyways, I am now gonna go host my read-along book club for the guest list, which I'm, I am nervous to reread the guest list, but I think it is also gonna be a lot of fun. So yeah, let's get into that and kind of exploring 
the book club function of the app. Okay, so I'm about halfway through the guest list and obviously I'm hosting the book club for this and I've just loved the experience of doing it so far. Seeing you guys chat in the book club like about your opinions and about like what you think is happening is so fun, especially because obviously I've read this book. I'm really enjoying like seeing what your theories are <laughs> and like knowing like some of you like have been pretty spot on. I'm a bit like, oh dear. <laughs> It's been really, really fun to chat with you about it and to have a discussion. I'm, I don't know, I'm just really, really enjoying it. Um, and just in terms of like the reread of this, obviously you guys know I love it. And I, I have been a bit nervous going into it because I'm like, what if I don't love it? Like, what if I'm like now a different person? But I'm fascinated by everything is there in front of you. I was saying to the book club, literally everything, every clue to every twist is there. So I never, I mean, I'm like dumb, but I never guessed like any of the twists in this. I really didn't guess any of them, but they're all there. It's so obvious once you've read it, going back and reading it again, how you're literally told everything. You are told all the twists. I can't believe it. It's so interesting. As somebody who wants to write like murder mysteries one day, it's absolutely fascinating seeing Lucy Foley do this. I can't believe, cause it's like little throwaway comments embedded in the rest of the book. Like it's so easy to miss, but when you're rereading it, you're like, Gagatandra. It's like a lesson. I feel like I'm learning a lesson rereading it and seeing all these little nuggets of information, like seeing them all come, you know, come up and be like, oh my god, I understand what's happening. Like it's so interesting. It makes me want to reread more murder mysteries. Because originally I was like, oh, I don't think a murder mystery is best to reread because you know the you know the a big end plot twist. But seeing, I, I can't believe how amazing this experience is of seeing all of those like little breadcrumbs laid throughout. It's so fascinating. I'm absolutely loving it. It's still gonna be five stars. I'm like, I feel validated. I'm also listening to your audiobook for the first time, which is really, really fun. It's got like a full cast and I've been enjoying rereading it via that. I've pretty much just been listening to the audiobook and it's really, really fun. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue on with the book club and rereading this. Um, and I'm just honestly having the best time. It's so much fun. So I'm around Tom, so apologies for the strange <laughs> angle, but I finished the guest list and so I thought I would check in with just some of my thoughts on the book. But I don't really have much to say. I feel like I've spoken to you guys about it like a hundred times. Like, <laughs> I feel like it'd be a broken record. I really enjoyed the reread. I really, I, I don't think I've ever reread re -read like a mystery. And it's a very different experience. When you're reading like a fantasy, you may be like reappreciating the writing or the characters, but like mysteries are so based in plot. And I just, again, I just really loved the experience of seeing all those clues pan out and seeing the story progress. But I think that the highlight for me was just the book club. I don't really have any other thoughts to give you on the book other than I think it has been demoted from my favorite murder mystery of all time to second. I always kept going back and forth between that and the Thursday murder club. And I think I actually prefer the Thursday murder club, which like, who is she? <laughs> But I think my, my, a lot of my love, and I want to keep it intact, but a lot of my love for the guest list is from it being one of the first mysteries I read and like it getting me into that and it being such a surprise for me. But I really loved the book club. I love seeing everyone's theories come in. I loved like, just like seeing it all play out. I loved all your thoughts. I loved reading it with you. So what we did with the book club is we like, scheduled dates to read sections by. I've never done it like that before. And it was it was fun because you read it slowly and you'd like want to carry on, but you had to discuss it first. And I just really loved seeing everyone like theorize and some people were getting it right very early on. And I was like, oh my God. Something I do really like about the book club on this app is some with, with some book clubs, it will be like, you have to do a post and then people can comment on a post. But this is very like chat forum-esque, you know, where everyone just messages and it kind of puts them in order. And I do prefer that because it allows you to give like little thoughts or like it, it creates a better conversation, I think, than it being like a post, like everyone having to do a post that people can comment and reply on. It makes the whole group 
much more, you know, everyone responding to one another and going back and forth on ideas. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And you know, the book clubs I really like, you can have private ones, you can have it with your friends, or you can make a big public one or whatever. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed my little reread of this. This was kind of like a little extra part of the video. But I hope those of you that did participate in the book club had fun. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Obviously at the conclusion, you know, it gave me a two star, but like, I owned that book. I was so excited for that book. It had a lot of my favourite tropes. So I feel like on the whole, it was a pretty good recommendation. I just didn't actually end up liking the book. <laughs> but who knows? I may have preferred Apples Never Fall. But I mean, come on. A Skin Full of Shadows? I mean, come on. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be one of my favourite books this year. Whenever I, I have a book that I love this much, that I really, really love, I find in the vlog, I, I'm very, I'm not very capable of like really communicating my love. <laughs> Like, I feel like I do a really bad job of it, but I absolutely loved that book. Let me know what you thought of the books I read in this video. Make sure you download Novelink using the link down below. Use my link. <laughs> if you're gonna go download it, use my link. And um, I'd really recommend it. I think there's a lot of fun features on it to explore. And we kind of only really scratched the surface of it in this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and definitely go check out their app down below. If you're going to the end of the video, comment a blue heart emoji down below. Thank you so much for watching guys, I love you so much and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!